Okay, now we're going to move to the second and third lines of defense. And this is immunology, where we're looking at the second and the third lines. And our immune system is going to constantly survey the body. It's going to constantly be looking and trying to recognize and differentiate between normal and foreign material. And it's going to attack and destroy anything that it thinks is foreign. Now your white blood cells are involved in this. These are your leukocytes and they are going to be able to recognize any foreign material and differentiate it from your natural cells. And this, they work in the second and third lines of defense. So non-self is any foreign material and self of course is your normal cells in your body. So as I said, the immune system constantly is looking and seeking out any foreign non-self self cells so that they can be attacked by the normal healthy cells um, or attacked by the immune system cells. And your healthy cells should not be harmed by this. The exception here would be your cancer cells, which are abnormal or damaged self cells. Now, the immune system is very large and complex, and it involves cells and fluids in every organ and tissue. Um, you've got the reticuloendothelial system, or RES, where you've got these reticular fibers that form a network, and you've got these phagocytic cells in there called macrophages that'll eat up debris, foreign material. You've got extracellular fluid and lymph. You've got the bloodstream and the lymphatic system that all will participate in your immune function. So we've got to have a connection between these different compartments. And you can see here over on the right side is a continuous cycle of exchange between um, the reticuloendothelial system and the extracellular fluid and the lymphatics and the blood. It's just a continual system of exchange that happens. Um, the shading on the right, that shows variations in your phagocyte concentrations. So you notice around your joints you have more and of course in the core of your body you're going to have a lot more phagocytes. Now, the primary cells involved um, are cells that are in your blood, are your platelets, or your th thrombocytes that are involved in clotting, your erythrocytes, which are your red blood cells that are for transport, and then the leukocytes, which are your white blood cells that are involved in your immune function. So we're going to look at these white blood cells. There's two groups. There are granulocytes and agranulocytes. The granulocytes have granules in their cytoplasm. And this includes your neutrophils that are phagocytes that are very effective at taking down bacteria. Your eosinophils are going to uh, work to destroy things like parasites, parasitic worms and protists, and it's also, they're also involved in your allergic responses. Your basophils will release these chemical mediators, and they are modal. They can move around. They'll release things like histamine, which will cause inflammation. You know, when you have um, antihistamines you take when you're having a uh, response to inflammation. Heparin is also something they release, which is an anticoagulant. Now, mast cells are a type of base of basophil, but they're non-modal, and they're bound to connective tissue. They can't move around like other basophils can. The agranulocytes do not have granules in the cytoplasm, and you have two types. First is the lymphocyte. These are responsible for adaptive, specific immune responses. Your B cells, 
this is humoral immunity. Humoral means it's in your body fluids. And it's active, the activated B cells will make antibodies. Your T cells, these are for cell-mediated immunity. And when they're activated, uh, they will cause immune functions and kill foreign cells. Now the other type of agranulocyte is the monocytes, and these are my macrophages. Um, they are non-specific phagocytic cells. They just scavenge around and eat up foreign substances, and they will clean up any kind of debris or dead cells, and there are dendritic cells also that will trap the pathogens in their dendrites or their branches and participate in the immune reactions. And there you can see uh, a large um, white blood cell as it's phagocytizing those orange bacteria. Just surrounds it and eats it up. So here is a table of characteristics of leukocytes. You can see how they look over there in the appearance. Um, neutrophils, this is going to be the most numerous. There are 55 to 90 percent of your white blood cells are going to be leukocytes, I mean neutrophils. And as I said, they're really good at eating up bacteria. Your eosinophils, normally it's about 1 to 3 percent, unless you've got a parasitic um, situation or allergies. Basophils, it's only 0.5% of your white blood cells and that's going to mediate your allergic responses and your inflammation and so forth. Now monocytes, that's, that's the biggest uh, white blood cell and normally it's 3 to 7% and they're just phagocytes. And your lymphocytes, that's about 20 to 35% of your leukocytes. And um, they are the um, B lymphocytes will produce the antibodies and the T cells will actually um, attack and um, kill foreign cells. Now, when we talk about the lymphatic system, it's an alternative route for the return of extracellular fluid back to the circulatory system. It drains off fluid from the blood, and once it gets into the lymphatic system, it's called lymph. It's a plasma-like fluid, and um, so it will help to is involved in your inflammatory response. And it's constantly, again, surveilling and recognizing and protecting us against foreign materials. This is in green, a picture of your lymphatic system. Uh, you can see that um, the fluids drain out of the blood. It's plasma-like. It becomes lymph when it gets in the lymphatic system. And it's a one-way system from your lymphatic capillaries up here at the top um, to the collecting vessels that are here and the ducts that will go into the large lymphatic trunks and go on back to the subclavian veins and then to the heart. So it's a one-way system, whereas the cardiovascular system is a two-way system. It leaves the heart and returns to the heart. But the lymphatic system doesn't do that. It, the fluid enters in the lymphatic capillaries and it gets carried around and then it returns back to the subclavian veins. This diagram is on page 449 in your textbook. I would recommend that you look at it um, and read the caption. It's showing up there in A how the K 
capillaries will take the excess fluid from the blood vessels and it goes into um, the lymphatic ducts which lead to the lymph nodes and it goes in the afferent vessel of the lymph node and filters through and it leaves by the efferent um, vessel and then it's going to go into the lymphatic ducts and on back to the veins that feed the heart, the subclavian veins that feed the heart. So which white blood cell would seek out and destroy parasitic worms? And you'd know this because you'd have a raised or a higher count of this type of leukocyte, be your eosinophils.